Oh, everyone loves to see the main character of a show kick some butt. But when we actually see his struggles and the effort he did to become strong, the payoff is all the more satisfying, isn't it? Now, if you agree with the above statement, this video is one that you will definitely enjoy. Because today, I'm going to be telling you about the top 10 best anime where the main character becomes strong, not by fate, but by hard work. And no, Black Clover will not be on this list. So without further delay, let's begin. Oh, but hold the phone there, little Timmy. Before we start, do you think you could smash that like button and press that subscribe button as well if you still have haven't already. And also, don't forget to hit that little little bell icon on the bottom there and set us all to be notified about all our latest new videos. It really means a lot. Anyways, starting off our list, we got one of the more recent shows, Ayaka, a story of bonds and wounds. Now, this one is quite true to its name, with a story exploring the relationship between four young men in rather super extraordinary situations. Well, all of these four may have been the main character, but as the law states, there can only be one. So, the main character of the show is an orphan who's swept up in a whole new direction when he meets one of his pop's disciples. From there, the dude sets on his journey to various mystical places throughout the show. And when I say mystical, don't take it lightly. There are freaking dragons in this world, and the main character uses the so-called magical abilities that this world has to offer and even learns how to freaking waterbend. But while in this environment, our dude learns to control his powers and, as usual, has to protect the peace of the world. Up next at number 9, we have The Hidden Dungeon Only I I can enter. Now, even though the name suggests so, this anime is not an isekai, but rather a typical fantasy anime. But the only thing not typical is the main character of the show, because he is not your typical overpowered dude killing monsters. Even though he is from a noble family, he is basically the Maki of the family from Jujutsu Kaisen. Always suppressed, tortured, ignored, and treated like absolute trash. However, he possesses a rare yet powerful ability to communicate with the Great Sage, an oracle who grants the main character the answer to absolutely anything. So basically, he is your typical chat GBT. So at this point, the main character decides to join the Hero Academy, but he knows he must become stronger to enter the institution. The chat GPT advises him to explore a hidden dungeon deep within the mountains. And there he just happens to meet a really hot man. <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Who out of nowhere grants him a cheat skill that literally enables him to control reality. And what happens after that? Watch the show to find out. And one more thing if you haven't guessed yet. This is an etchy anime. <laughs> and coming in at our 8th spot, we've got Dragon R Academy. Now, if the previous one is an etchy anime, then this one is the same. Maybe I should have changed the title of this video. But in any case, you may ask what the show is about exactly, and let me get you hyped when I say dragons. It's full of dragons, and almost everyone can ride them, aside for one person that is. Yep, it's the main character. But one day, the dude's dragons turn into a bunch of waifus. And what is better, I, I mean, worse than this? Well, the girls declare themselves as the master and the main character their servant. So this is a generic harem fantasy story where the main character slowly becomes stronger through some battles and learning about his dragons. And if you are just dying to know about the etchiness level of the show, then the answer is pretty high. <laughs> Beautiful girls and dragons with a ton of fan service. And if by any chance the premise is reminding you of Pokemon, then fun thing. The main character's name is Ash. The only difference is, rather than being surrounded by Pokemon, he is surrounded by absolute hot babes of waifus. Have fun with this one now. And then at number 7 we have Orient. Now as fun and carefree as the previous two shows were, this one is quite dark. It is based in a world where humans are either enslaved by demons or are hunters who kill demons. The main character dreams of becoming a hunter along with his friend, but both of them ended up as slaves to the demons, and from there, the journey begins for them. With the sole objective of becoming free and hunting those awful demons, the main character works hard as hell to accomplish his goals, but will that be it? Or will it happen that easily? Of course not. What do you think this is? Orient decorated itself to be what it intended to be. From our main protagonist to its world setting, there's never been a time when viewers should feel caught off guard. So if you are interested in these types of shows, this is probably a great recommendation for you. So don't forget to say thanks in the comments. After that, at number 6, we have Bento. Yes, we are finally back to the fun times because the premise of this paper show is freaking hilarious. Let me explain. Suppose you are in a supermarket and suddenly the bentos present there go on a 50% off sale. What would happen? An all-out brawl starts between people just to get their hands on the boxes. And the main character is stuck in all the chaos. 
but he is weak as hell, so what should he do? As if there was any other option than getting stronger, he gets involved with a bunch of hungry wolves or, simply, people who are strong as hell, and after that, he enjoys some of the best and most dramatic fights this show has to offer. So wanna watch an anime where the main character gets involved in an all-out brawl? Watch this one. So up next at number 5, we've got Campfire Cooking in Another World with My Absurd Skill. The first isekai and the first anime from MAPPA on this list. Now there can't be an anime list without a MAPPA anime, can there? It's almost impossible at this point, but this show isn't a typical isekai anime. Because the main character is not the type to be overpowered and kick some butt. And that's because he cannot even fight. I mean, he was but a mere salesman in his previous life. How can he? And even after reincarnating, the only power he got was to order groceries from Japan. So what did he do to get himself on this list? Well, the answer is that he cooked. And he cooked quite well. Because that was enough for him to tame one of the most powerful and legendary beasts in the magical world. So all the people lying at their bed doing nothing take notes. Because just cooking a good meal might bring you a fortune. Just don't expect to tame 10 feet tall wolves now. And after that, at number 4 we have Tiger and Bunny. Now before you call the police here, let me make it clear. This show is not about furries. So relax! But you may ask, why is this called Tiger and Bunny? Well, the main character is called the Wild Tiger and his new partner is called Bunny. Both of them are heroes and both of them have been performing in the new adaptation of Tokyo Ghoul. Not good enough. And they could not have been more different from each other. But to save their sinking career, the only choice they have is to work together to save the city. But that won't be easy. At first glance, Tiger and Bunny may seem like nothing more than a superpowered buddy show, and to a certain degree, that's a fair assessment. The plot is relatively straightforward and, to be exact, predictable, but what saves the show is the main duo and their journey to become stronger and better. It's really fun to watch, so this is a show I think most of you guys would like. After that, welcoming us to the top three, we have a pretty popular one, Kingdom. Now, if you don't live under a rock, I am pretty sure you've heard about the Kingdom manga at least once in your life. It's famous most probably due to the number of chapters it has, but for once a historic manga is finally adapted into an anime properly. And for those who still haven't heard of this show till now, let me help you. The story takes place in China's Warring States period. I'm not gonna explain this, but it's time for the history nerds to shine. So if you want to know, take a look in the comments down below. Anyways, coming back to the topic, the show focuses on a young war orphan slave who dreams to be a legendary general of the warring states of China. But in no way will that be easy, and the show demonstrates his struggles, sufferings, and efforts to reach his goal. The first arc of the show serves as an introduction to the warring times, demonstrating the harshness of living in such times and the brutal power struggles. So if you're looking for a historical epic, this is a really good one to watch. Next up at the honorable runner-up spot, we have Dororo. Simply put, Dororo is a show of a blind dude with sword hands. Wanna know more? <laughs> Alright! So the story starts with a scumbag samurai lord who makes a pact with demons for power and wealth. But the payment for that gift was still due. So when his first child is born, he has no limbs, no eyes, not even skin. Yet, he is alive. So is this child still loved? <laughs> in your dreams, he is disposed of in a river and forgotten. But as luck would have it, he is saved by a medicine man who provides him with prosthetics and weapons, allowing him to survive and fend for himself. The boy lives and grows and although he cannot see, hear, or feel anything, he must defeat the demons that took him as a sacrifice. With the death of each one, he regains a part of himself that is rightfully his. For many years, he wanders alone until one day an orphan boy, Dororo, befriends him. After that, the unlikely pair of castaways now fight for their survival and humanity in an unforgiving demon-infested world. Dororo is a dark fantasy adventurous tale with supernatural elements and dealing with the character's emotional journey of discovery. And if by any chance you still haven't seen it, this is your chance. Just do it. But coming in at first place, we have Ranking of Kings. There's absolutely no chance that you haven't heard from this anime. It was one of the most hyped anime of last year. But if you haven't, let me do that for you. The main character of the show is a young prince who cannot hear or speak, but that does not stop him from being strong. He tames or rather befriends a dangerous shadow creature. I won't spoil anything else, but trust me, the show is awesome. But one complaint a lot of people say is that this show is childish. And one of the main reasons for that comment is the art style of the show. But if you manage to vibe with that, you will be in for an absolutely amazing journey filled with emotions. So it's your choice. 
Well, looks like that's the list, guys. If you were able to make it this far, please be sure to comment on which shows you have watched before or which shows you're gonna watch. And tell me if I should have added any other anime befitting the title. I will be sure to check it out. If there are too many, who knows? There might be a part two. And also be sure to press that bell icon and set us all to be notified about all our latest new videos. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I mean, haven't I worked hard? Come on, come on, come on, come on. But in any case, as for now, I'll catch you later. See you in the next one.